you know you want to build an empire. You've heard Cody Sanchez sell the secret of buying boring businesses. But did you know that you could use SBA financing as the key to building an empire with boring businesses? We're going to have a conversation with the concierge to small business lending, Mr. Bo Eckstein. How are you doing, Bo? I am doing great. I changed the diaper today, so I'm proud of myself. It's it's a lot of, uh, it is kind of new hard. Dad, new dad tasks. Congratulations. Yeah, the thing you got to do. Yeah. But other than that, it's good. So. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's talk about this. Uh, but before we get into kind of buying boring businesses, building an empire with SBA financing, I want to highlight something that we're doing in the One Rental at a Time school community. Once again, one of the millionaires contributors to our channel is taking on the action of creating monthly uh, school classrooms. You're going to be scheduling an event June 29th called the Business Ownership Summit. Tell us about it. Who should attend? What's it going to be about? Because uh, again, this is going to be just another free bonus for buying in the school community. What's going on on the 29th? Okay. So Business Ownership Summit, this is our second event for this, uh, for Business Ownership Summit. The first one was a massive success. We actually had you speak uh, and you opened that up and um, the, you know, I want to grow them every, every time we do them, but basically every few months, we're going to do a business ownership summit and a business ownership summit is basically, uh, all things business ownership, whether you want to keep the W2 job and you're looking to offset taxes, we're going to have, uh, Michael reader speak. Uh, he's a very good CPA, uh, that specializes in franchise and small business owners. Uh, so you can ask him all the questions you want. Section 179 bonus depreciation. We're gonna have speed rounds. We're gonna have different franchise models present their brand in five minutes or less uh, to give you an overview of what's out there. You know, the majority of people I talk to, they're doing fairly well in their W-2 and they're like, well, I am not really getting ahead even though I make two or 300 grand a year. And there's a problem in the world if you're making two or 300 grand a year and you can't save any money and get ahead. And a big portion of that, of their earnings go to taxes. So it, it, it behooves you not to understand these principles of why I believe and why I'm writing a book on why everybody should own a small business, whether you keep your job or you want to transition or you're looking for a side hustle. Everybody needs to start a business, whether it's a franchise, you do a business acquisition, whatever. So that's the that's the concept. We're going to have um, different speed rounds with the franchisors. You're going to understand, like, how do you run a business? What, what in the, If I own a painting company, does that mean I'm actually painting the houses? No. If I own a health company that does saunas, do I, do I have to work there? No, you have to be a good leader and business owner. A lot of people that get into franchising, they own many different brands, they own different locations. They're able to scale. It just, it's just being able to systematize and follow a proven recipe to grow a business. So you just gotta find the right business model for you. A lot of people wanna quit their job. They're just, they feel trapped. They feel like they're in, in shackles. And so there's baby steps, I think there's, there's baby businesses like vending and things you can get into, but you got to take action. And that's what business ownership summit's all about. Yeah. Again, business ownership summit, June 29th, it will be in the school calendar. Frankly, just tuning in for the tax conversation is going to be amazing. Cause again, there are a lot of things above and below the line that be, can get happen. If you have a business, uh, one of the things that I've, I, I took away, cause I haven't, you know, went to school, did accounting, all of that is, the tax code is really written for business owners, not for employees. And again, having a CPA and EA kind of talk about that is pretty, pretty cool. But hey, let's get to the process at hand. Let's talk about building an empire by buying boring businesses with SBA financing. What the heck is this all about? Sounds sexy. Um, really, it is sexy. I've never been uh, more impressed by a loan product than SBA financing. If you're, if you're an aspiring business owner or an existing business owner, you need to utilize this type of funding to, to grow and scale because it all comes down to having good debt, good leverage, and good investments. And so what do I mean by an accelerator? Well, okay, you, you have a W-2 job and you're looking to transition. How are you going to transition? How are you going to replace that $200,000 W-2 salary? Well, you can go and find an existing business that the seller is retiring or the sellers are getting divorced is another common reason why people sell businesses, right? Or they're just burnt out. There's a lot of reasons why people, same thing in real estate. We look for death, divorce, taxes, all these things, right? Code violations. You're looking for the same type of seller that's in one of those situations. 
And then you're going to uh, structure an offer to that seller, knowing that you have SBA in, the, in your back pocket. Now, SBA is not always the best option. I always like to go in with seller financing. Mm -hmm. But but the, the reality of it is, is there's always going to be on the majority of these deals, there's going to be some sort of seller carry back. Right? Correct. Mm -hmm. So I would go in knowing... Look, if the if the business financials can support my SBA loan from a debt service coverage standpoint, I can yep. get up to 90% of the proceeds. And that includes building in working capital. So you have that bandwidth to make a transition. And you can, even if you're, there's a lot of people I'm talking to right now that are getting laid off. So even if you don't have a job, you can actually use the salary you're going to take from this business. And that will, that will support what we call the global cash flow. So let's talk about this business. It's 900 grand they want, and um, you need some working capital, employee salary. So the, the total project cost is a million dollars. Well, we know that the bank is, if the cash flow is there, is going to lend up to 900,000, 90%. So then we can also tell the seller, look, we're a little bit low on funds. We really want to buy the business. Um, we want you to carry back 7.5% on full standby. So that means there's no payments for the first two years that it could accrue interest. So now for 25 grand, we close on the deal. Hmm. Two and a half percent of a million dollars. Wow. And so, and so now let me just kind of rewind. You should be, if you're a borrower, you should have what we call post-close liquidity, meaning like that shouldn't be your only 25 grand. You should hmm. have uh, banks say they want to see 10% post-close liquidity, which would be a, uh, you know, a hundred grand, but you can, it's, it's, it's not it's not a set in stone exactly, but I always like to tell people if you you got to have at least six or seven months of yeah. payment reserves in reserves to to make it happen. Um, but we, we're able to piece these deals together. And let's just say the seller says, "Hey, I'll do five percent." Well, you can bring an investor partner to bring the other five percent in, and they can own less than twenty percent, and they don't have to go. So you you can structure one hundred percent finance deals like that. Now you take over the business. Uh, the the seller was making a hundred thousand dollar salary. Now you're making that hundred thousand dollar salary. Okay. Now you're going to run the business and grow the business, and they're, and then you're going to if you if we go and look at what Cody Sanchez does, she modernizes his businesses. Mm -hmm. She you know uses technology, uh, builds uh, newsletters, things to grow the business. Exactly what you're going to do. Now here's the best part. Here's here's where you really put gasoline on it. You now own the business for over a year. You file your tax returns. Uh, let's just call this an HVAC business. It's a heating and cooling business. So now you own it for over a year. You file a tax return. Your financials are solid. Well, now down the street, um, Betty wants to sell her HVAC company. And mm -hmm. it's a good company. They've been around for 20 years. Well, the best part is, is once you have one filed tax return, you some of the banks will offer 100% expansion financing. Wow. So within two years for 25 grand out of pocket, you now own two businesses that are doing, I don't know, let's throw a number out, $5 million in top line revenue, you know, and whatever the margins are on that is, you know, essentially your, your profit. So mm -hmm. it is very achievable that you can do this. Now, I think the people that are going to do this are the people that will create a buy box, mm -hmm. um, look at a lot of deals, just like we yep. talk about on your channel. And if you're able to do this, I actually talked to somebody on your from your channel the other last week and he's him and his partner have been looking at businesses for over a year and they they, they want to buy in like an online type of business where there's no brick and mortar and they found one and so we we've we're uh working on getting them a term sheet so they can submit their uh loi their letter of interest to the to the seller so nice yeah it's it's all out there it's all achievable i i encourage you guys to really soak this up because yeah. i think the more cash flow you have today, the more rentals you can buy for the long-term investment strategy. And I think that's the real gasoline on all of this equation. The, yeah. The other thing I really want to point out for people is I think AI is going to disrupt a lot of white collar jobs over the next three to five years. The thing that won't be disrupted by AI is the trades. We're talking HVAC, painting, right? The boring businesses. I want you to feel that. You know, this whole go to school, get a good job, get a master's degree, you know, make two or 300 grand. 
So, some of you all are going to get replaced by AI. Why don't you take the opportunity to start building an empire today, getting that first deal, seeing it, so you can get out of the way of what's coming. I The other thing that's very common, because again, I have a big rent, real estate portfolio. A lot of the trades people I work with are retiring, right? I don't, I think I have one roofer that's in his 30s that I use, but most of the people I use are in their 50s and 60s. So we have a whole generation that needs to be recycled. So again, I think the trades are really going to step up. If you want to be the entrepreneur and running them like Cody Sanchez, this is going to be great. And I really do think people can build an empire with boring businesses via SBA. I didn't even know you could buy one business, file a tax return, and then get potentially 100% financing on an expansion. That's amazing opportunity for folks. So uh, I know you have the uh, Business Ownership Summit coming up on the 29th, which we will get people a link for. But if somebody wanted to reach out to you right now because they are that excited, how should they do it? Just go to onerentalmeeting.com and schedule a call. Onerentalmeeting.com. Go there now. He created that URL just for us. And again, folks, look forward to the June 29th uh, Business Ownership Summit. Spe don't don't sleep on that tax conversation because the tax code was written for business owners, not employees. Take care. Thanks, Bo. Thank you.